American flags are flying here as the U.S. team has made its way through the opening rounds and into the final 16. And tonight, we bring you more soccer action of the USL pro action type as Charlotte is in town here tonight against the Harrisburg City Islanders. There you see Charlotte 4 8 and 1, Harrisburg 3 7 and 3. Charlotte just ahead of Harrisburg in the standings, Jason. So tonight, uh, for both of these teams, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a big game. Both teams uh, desperately need points uh, as we approach halfway through the mid market of the season. Um, Charlotte coming off a big win. Uh, they put together a good performance against uh, Charleston the other week. Jorge Herrera having a great game, making player of the week uh, for the USL. Um, and he's going to be a factor tonight for Charlotte um, as they look to get three points. And Harrisburg, of course, coming off of two losses. They lost against Montreal and then before that against Philly. So they're looking to try and turn things around. Both of these teams, Jason, have struggled with giving up goals early. And they've struggled all season long. They've been in games, but those early goals have kind of been the, the, the thorn in the side because they, they've, they've had to chase the game right from the get-go. Both uh, coaches want to make sure that they can get in front of that, hopefully starting tonight, halfway through the season. Still time to try and make their way, hopefully, back towards uh, playoff action. Absolutely. You know, Charlotte, they want to defend collectively as a group. I think that's a big thing for them, uh, you know, watching some of their past games. And, you know, for Harrisburg, scoring early and often, I think that's going to be a huge factor for them. I had a chance to talk to both coaches for uh, before tonight's game and get their keys on what they think both uh, they need to do to uh, get a win out of here tonight. Let's hear what they both had to say. Well, I think uh, our number one key is really uh, defending collectively as a unit, which we've struggled for a big part of the year. We've always kind of been chasing a game, and we can't do that. We need to need to play well defensively and, and um, not chase tonight's game. Another key would be uh, in attack. I think we really we've been looking to counterattack a little bit more, so we're hoping to be able to, to counterattack with numbers, uh, not just one or two guys in a box, but get four or five guys counterattacking tonight. Uh, I mean, you know, the the first key it sounds like something you can say every game, but uh, I think we need to score first. Uh, we've played. 13 games this season, we've scored first once. Uh, two games in in 0-0 ties, so that means 10 times uh, we fell behind in the game and we're chasing the game, and that's difficult um, in any sport, but especially in soccer. So scoring the first goal is, is going to be huge for us. Um, you know, I think that uh, playing Charlotte, uh, they're similar to us in a lot of ways. I think both teams are good on the ball. Both teams like to play quick uh, and play through the midfield. I think the whoever can win the battle in the midfield uh, is going to go a long way to winning this game. Uh, you know, not only uh, winning balls and winning tackles, but keeping possession. So I think the, the battle in the middle of the field is going to be very important tonight. And finally, I think uh, with Charlotte, we really have to be careful uh, giving away free kicks uh, around, up and around the box. Uh, Herrera's as good as anybody in this league, as we found out last year in the playoffs, he scored a, a big goal on a free kick uh, right outside the box. So we have to make sure that uh, we're smart around the box and we don't give away uh, unnecessary fouls. So there you see Jason, both coaches, of course, you know, focus on finishing and defensively making sure they're not giving up those early goals. Yeah, and you know, it's obvious both coaches know what their teams have to do. Um, and it's just about the team that can execute that tonight uh, to come away with three points. All right, well, tonight it's Harrisburg and Charlotte, both teams at the bottom of the table trying to fight their way back into playoff contention halfway through the season. We're going to have it all for you next right here on Invicta Sports, presented by Faulkner Honda. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two. It's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. Here, whether you enjoy hunting, or fishing, discovering history, or cutting edge technology. It's here, from delicious chocolate to professional sports, wild roller coasters to endless shopping. It's here, from fine dining to homestyle cooking, exciting nightlife to small town charm. Dauphin County has it all. No surprise, we were voted the 12th most livable region in the nation. It's here, you should be here too. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award. 
the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Beautiful do job with the United States National Anthem. As we're ready to get underway here, Jason, it's uh, going to be a good one. I remember the uh, past few years, uh, this being such a big rivalry as both of these teams usually near the top of the table. And I'm expecting the same type of rivalry as we've seen in the past, especially since both of them have so much to fight for to try and get back up on the table. Yeah, you know, Charlotte came in here at the end of the season last year and uh, put the playoff hopes of uh, Harrisburg to bed. So, you know, that's that's still fresh in the mind of of Bill Betcher and his group. And, uh, you know, they're gonna, desperately looking for three points. And, you know, both teams really, at this point in the season, they're really looking to turn things around for a, a strong second half. And so those three points tonight are, are necessary for both groups. As we take a look down through the starters for Charlotte, one player that we uh, that uh, Billy Betcher talked about that he's got to be careful of is Herrera. Herrera, especially, they don't want to give up those free kicks down near the goal. Herrera, outstanding out, on the ball, probably one of the best uh, restarters in, in, in the whole USL. So they want to really be careful of him as we start, start to look at the uh, the Islander side as well. Of course, um, for them, Langley has been hot of, of late. So Morgan Langley, of course, is one of those players that uh, that uh, you got to be careful of. And then you've got Hernandez and McLaughlin as well in there. You know, and you start to spread that around right. Ecker with that speed as well. Yeah, you know, it, back to Charlotte, you know, Herrera, he's a technical player. Um, he's a little bit smaller, but don't let that fool you. I mean, he's able to play just as physical as anybody else. And like you said, that's dead ball set pieces. He, he executes. He's absolutely dead deadly. Nearly every ball is on frame. He's challenging the keeper, making the keeper have to come up with a big save. And uh, from for the Islanders, I mean, you said it there again. Uh, McLaughlin, uh, he's he's dynamic. He's always looking to to push himself forward. He's always looking to make things happen on the dribble um, and off the ball as well, which is very important, especially for a young player. Uh, stays very busy when he's off the ball. And you know, Morgan Langley, he's, he's developed into a leader for this Islanders team this year, and um, he's carried them through a lot of games. Um, and he's come up with some big goals when when the Islanders need it. And you know, I. You can imagine they'll be looking to him to uh, create some opportunities. Absolutely. Herrera, one of those players that when he comes out into the island, I absolutely love to watch. Like you said, he is a smaller player, five foot nine, 150 pounds. He's got 13 points on the season. He's racked up 971 minutes for them, so he is a mainstay in this lineup. He's got five goals, three assists, got 22 shots on goals, and only 10 fouls. He's not a player that gets uh, the team in trouble, but he's one that can get him out of trouble awful quick, that's for sure. So we're just about ready to get underway here. As you see Jan Ekra on the screen, we start to see uh, some shots around Kayan in the goal for uh, the uh, Charlotte Eagles. And good opportunity for Garrett Pettis this evening for the Islanders, uh, getting one of his rare starts. Um, this evening um, hopefully he can make some things happen not only for the team but for himself generate some goals and generate some offensive power that this islanders team needs 
a little bit of a different lineup as we see here. Jan Ekra in the middle of the field, something we're not used to seeing too much. We're seeing um, uh, him uh, playing more, it looks like, is going to be more of a defensive midfield role. And right off the bat, we see Hernandez playing a little bit more on that offensive side. Maybe a change up here, hoping that maybe uh, Herrera can get things going and allow Ekra to try and control that middle of the field a little bit more and distribute a little bit more because he's great on the, on the ball as well for Harrisburg. Yeah, interesting there. Brill for the Islanders, usually uh, playing as a target. Um, it looks like he's sitting more a little bit defensive. So it's uh, a little bit of a different change here from the Islanders then. Islanders trying to clear this out finally able to get a foot on this one will be Andrews Cody Andrews still with it actually Langley now with it Morgan Langley looking for McLaughlin nice step up in there for Charlotte though as that one sent forward that ball by Dixon inside shot taken great save by Noble and there's that dangerous play inside the box that we were in early on that both coaches talked about right there Nick Noble down in the goal as well here. But both uh, both teams talked about that early on, not wanting to give up that early goal. Well, we, we know from history this season, Islanders have tend to give up a few early goals, and they've had to chase the game from the beginning. Take a look at it here. Noble coming out and making the save, and he's injured on the play. Still slow to get up. Noble comes in, makes the save. Gets right back up again, runs into his own player, looking to see where the injury might come from. Don't know, didn't see it. Didn't see what happened there, but Noble back up. Good to see. Of course, him is probably one of the biggest roles on this team. He's been so good in the goal for the Islanders over the three years he's been here. Um, I'm sure Coach Woodison and Betcher are happy to see him back up on his feet as well. Still moving the ball around here, the Islanders. Burrell sent it outside for Cox. Back now for Andrews as they'll switch the ball around here. Nice night here, Central Pennsylvania for soccer action. Temperature in the high 80s, maybe dropping down now to about 83, 84 degrees. The humidity has dropped. It was so much hotter here on the island, so the temperature is getting a little bit more comfortable for these players. Hernandez switches it to Cox here for the Islanders now. Cox, McLaughlin. Andrews. And now Charlotte the other way. Hall with it now. Hall streaking down this near side. Back for Dixon. And a giveaway there as Pettis able to come up with it. Burrill outside now for Langley. Morgan Langley checks it up. Islanders looking for that long ball to the right side there twice now. That one flies out of bounds there as that one's set up by Marquez. So a throw in here for Charlotte. So a little bit of a different lineup than we're used to seeing, Jason, for Harrisburg. Yeah, Burrill's, you know, dropping into that central midfield role um, as opposed to, you know, his usual forward target position. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he... Uh, performs tonight in that role you know uh jason pelletier a long mainstay for this islander side um you know coming off the bench this evening uh, so Burrill, we'll see if he can step into that role and fill some shoes so the islanders send this one out again long ball this one will run but stays in play Ball sent deep here. Noble will keep this one in play for the Islanders as he sends it across. We're in our fifth minute of play here. Happy to have you along here in Avica Sports. Jason Hodgkins and Chad Edwards and our Avica crew bringing you USL soccer action, Harrisburg against Charlotte. As we mentioned, both of these teams have had some good games throughout the season, but have lost off on those one nothing games, have given up some early goals, and have been in each one of the games, just have not been able to capitalize on uh, some of the opportunities they've had, and that's why they're sitting where they are in the table, hoping to turn things around here halfway through the season. Still a lot of games to go. I don't think either one of these teams can keep, can catch Orlando, but, uh, but they can uh, still battle to see if they can uh, find a way into the playoff picture. 
Yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a tough road, and the majority of that journey is going to be uphill for both teams. Yep. Um, they're going to have to grind out some tough games, um, really dig deep uh, for those results. But you know, really, for either of these teams, it's it's not out of reach for them. Um, both teams have put together you know decent runs over the past few years um, that have allowed them to get into the the playoff picture. Um, you know, and they, you be sure that both coaches are going to be getting their teams to try to try to get to that mark. McLaughlin down along this near side takes it to the end line. Nice job by Dixon to get a foot on that one. It'll be the first corner kick of the game here for the Islanders. This corner kick brought to you by Angelo Soccer Corner. For all your soccer needs, make it Angelo Soccer Corner. The Islanders looking to see if they can capitalize early on here in this contest here this evening. Charlotte, one of those teams uh, that uh, has not had the luxury of uh, having an affiliation with any of the MLS teams as of yet. And uh, that was one of the things. Oh, nice header. That one just over the top by uh, and Cody Andrews for the Islanders. Nice restart there, Jason. Yeah, Cody Andrews, he's tall frame. He's a big boy. He likes to mix it up in the box. He's not afraid to bang his body around. Um, he's a player that's going to look for every opportunity to get, use his height. And good service from Hernandez here. Good run. Cody Andrews looking for that far post. Good attempt. Yep. Get down on top of that young player a little bit more. Drive that ball down. Ball taken away. Herrera goes down on the play. Andrews plays it ahead for Pettis. Ball in for McLaughlin. That one's going to fly out of bounds as well for a throw in here. So I was mentioning Harrisburg has had the luxury of having some of those players to float up and down from the Union. Charlotte not in that situation yet. Talking to Coach Stevens before the game, he said that they're hoping that maybe next year they'll be able to, to, to find a way to get uh, partnered up with somebody. And, uh, and start to take advantage of it. He says that's part of the issue. You know, when a league grows as fast as it does, and he's very excited about it, is you start to see that disparity between some teams, you know, that uh, that are able to, to merge early and some that aren't. But he says he is so excited about the league, and he says it's tremendous what he's seen in terms of growth since he's been with the league. So Herrera takes the shot, but offsides on the play there was Drew Yates. Yeah, and, you know, going back to, as you said, it helps for when your road schedule, when your season schedule gets tough, it, it's nice to have a two, three fre uh, fresh pair of legs coming off the bench or in your starting lineup, guys that you know can play and perform. Um, it makes a difference. Harrisburg, you know, they have that luxury. Charlotte, um, they have to grind it out pretty much with the guys they have. Marquez with it on the far side. Not used to seeing Burrell come back so far. Like you said, were you seeing him up top? And You know, he's, he's a player that can do it all. And he's got that technical ability. Um, spent time at Real Madrid uh, within their youth system. So, you know, he's a player who's got, you know, immense qualities. Um, you know, he's the type of player you could use him as a utility player. He could show up anywhere on the field and uh, still be able to perform. He's been very active. Finding his way around the field here early on. Here's Langley doing what he does best. Short touches through. Langley along the end line cuts it back. Still with it. Morgan Langley looking, able to find Burrell now. Burrell, top of the box. Checks it up, switches it across here. McLaughlin able to take this one down and settle it. Check that. I'm sorry, that's not McLaughlin on the other side. For the Islanders, number 16, rather, Matt Banner. You know, so far, you know, from Islanders, you know, being able to dominate a little bit of the possession here. Um, you know, and this has been their story for most of the year. They're able to keep the ball. They've got, you know, personnel-wise, some of the best players in the league. But can they put it together for 90 minutes? And that's been the struggle so far this year. Giveaway there, and Charlotte the other way. And Noble way out of the goal gets a foot on this one. Great run, though, down the middle of the field by Tyrone Hall. And Charlotte almost able to put him in on goal. Did look like he may have been a step off from here, but uh, referee keeping the flag down. It'll be a throw in up uh, deep now for the Charlotte Eagles. And Tyrone Hall, he's got he's got a decent bit of pace on him. Um, but fortunately, I think Marquez and uh, Cody Andrews can match him a little bit, pace for pace. So Thompson will take the throw for Charlotte. Ball 
swung in near that far side. Herrera standing there, swings it across, drives it hard across. Dangerous to let that ball fall to a player like Herrera at that back post. Islanders able to get out of that one. Jan Ekra with it now. Again, back for Marquez. Yeah, Herrera, he's going to drift into those spots like that. Um, and his teammates are going to find him because they know he's going to drift into those spots. You know, Rafael Cox has got to be aware of uh, Herrera drifting off that back post and collecting it like that. Um, that's where Herrera shows up and, and he'll punish a team. Burrell trying to get on the end of that one. Here comes Charlotte the other way. Eagles still with it. Across the top now. Sakire. Down inside the box. That one's going to be knocked off by Banner. It'll be a corner kick, the first of the game now for the Charlotte Eagles. Herrera will take the kick. Duckett looking to get himself in the box. He's a, he's a big, big man as well. Duckett used to play for the Islanders, what, about two years ago, right? He wasn't here last year, was he, Jason? Uh, not last year. It was Rochester and New England That's Revolution right. last year. And, uh... That one flicked out of bounds there by Ekra. Be a throw in. Big throw here coming from Richard Dixon. Dixon with a long throw right at the edge of the 60 yard. Brill electing to try and play that one out and finally cleared. You know, for the, for the Islanders, you know, that ball's bouncing off a of throwing in and around the edge of the six there. And they really need to front uh, that player, man in front, man behind. Uh, not allow that ball to penetrate into the box, especially bouncing like that. That's going to cause you issues uh, as the game goes on. Hall with it still here. Hall takes it to the end line and a nice job there by Cody Andrews to play that one off and let it go off the end line. So we are in our 13th minute, 0-0 between Charlotte and Harrisburg. We're going to pause. Tier, whether you enjoy hunting or fishing, discovering history or cutting edge technology. It's here from delicious chocolate to professional sports, wild roller coasters to endless shopping. It's here from fine dining to homestyle cooking. Exciting nightlife to small town charm. Dolphin County has it all. No surprise, we were voted the 12th most livable region in the nation. It's here. You should be here too. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Happy to have you along here in Avica Sports, bringing you USL Pro Soccer action. And, of course, Invica Sports presentation of USL Soccer is brought to you by and presented by Faulkner Honda. Big thank you to Donnie Perry and the staff at Faulkner Honda for coming aboard this year to help bring you USL Pro Soccer action in the City Islanders. Sikiri sends it outside for Herrera. Herrera swings it to the back post. And I think he was looking for right down the center. Drew Yates had him there. Just could not find him. Had Tyrone Hall as well to the back post, Jason. Yeah, Herrera usually provides a little bit better service than that. But there, you know, you see Charlotte on the counterattack. Um, Stephens mentioned that uh, as a key to one of their games. And there you have it. They're, they're quick on the counter. Uh, so they're, you know, they're, they're sticking with their game plan. Uh, you know, the Islanders in the past have been subtle, subtle to, uh, you know, the quick counter. Um, so they need to be aware of that. Long ball here intended for Thomas Thompson. That one runs out of play. Thompson was uh, 
is with the Chicago Fire. Now, you will see some players that are on this lineup that are from some of those teams. There's one with the New England, New England Revolution not in a lineup here tonight. And uh, we look down to you know, Chicago Fire, like I mentioned, Thompson. Uh, looking down through, again, we've got uh, the Chicago Fire. We've got uh, Giuseppe Gentile. Shot taken as that one goes off the post. Wow. Excellent job there by Jimmy McLaughlin. We saw that from him a couple weeks ago. Picking the ball up at halfway and getting himself on the drive, going at the defenders, uh, making them commit. Morgan Langley, you know, a few minutes ago doing the same. Uh, so it's great to see that dynamic play from those outside wide players. This, uh, I really believe, uh, right now is the breakthrough year for Jimmy McLaughlin because he's uh, made his way from uh, a sub player to uh, a starter. And you've seen him just just uh, explode this season in terms of his confidence and his skills and his patience. And even his experience, as you see that coming out now, in his leadership on the field as well. So um, it's nice to see a player that's, you know, come straight out of high school and stepped up into this, working hard to try and get up with the Philadelphia Union team that he's associated with. Nice ball swung across, actually, Morgan Langley cutting inside. Um, instead of that long ball to the outside. But uh, Jimmy definitely coming into his own this year, I think. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, and he's always had those those qualities of a of player that can get himself in the first team. Um, you know, I would say, you know, a little bit of his size can be an issue. He gets pushed off the ball a little, little too easily. Um, but, you know, that's something he can remedy uh, as he progresses in his career and he learns how to play and, and uh, come against, come up against bigger players. But, you know, if you're looking for a player who has good pace, dynamic, likes to attack, good service, good feet, and he's your man. He can make things happen. It's a young man, too, that, uh, you know, has plenty of time to put that size on in the gym. And then during the offseason, you put that in, you put that size on. So um, I think we'll see that Jimmy is one of those players I think we'll see up playing with the union here in, in, in uh, very soon, especially with the way he's uh, progressing this season as well. Here's Charlotte the other way now as they start to build up from the middle. Have Ferreira to this outside. Here's Sakiri. Sends this one through. Tyrone's going to get there. Cox trying to chase him down now. Tyrone waits. Has Herrera. Herrera, top of the box. Leaves it back for Sakiri. And Charlotte will check it back outside now and regather themselves. Switch to the far side now by Gold. Guzman. Charlotte comfortable with just keeping possession right now. Knock it around, get a feel, get in the game, get some touches, get comfortable. Don't want to give it away in the center there. Here comes McLaughlin heading down inside now. Looking to go down through, does. What a great job by Yates on that run all the way back, though, Jason, to make sure he gets back and helps defend there. Ball still loose. And now they're able to clear it out. But yeah, Yates, Yates lost that ball to center of the field, and he tracked that ball all the way back and was able to almost get that away from uh, from Jimmy McLaughlin. And that's what, you, that's what you like to see. If somebody loses the ball, you want him to fight to get it back. Sure. You know, and Burrell did a good job there, essentially, to, to pick that ball up off of Yates. Um, but Yates... Uh, you know, sporting a nice fresh cut uh, this evening. He's the type of player who's going to work tirelessly for his teammates. Um, came here from uh, City Islanders, picked up an injury, wasn't able to progress through the season. Uh, but he was always that player that you knew was uh, going to work hard and capable of doing special things. This ball down the side, I think that one intended for Langley. Played quite a ways away from him. Charlotte looking to break out again here. 19th minute, both teams able to get through that 15-minute mark that has been absolutely the thorn in their sides, giving up those early goals. So for both teams, that was a, a key. And right now, they're uh, able to uh, accomplish that in not giving up the early goal. Now they've settled into the game. Now they put their game plan into action to see what happens from here. Pettis being hounded from behind now, held up. The ball will come all the way back, though, for Marquez. Sent ahead by Burrill. Here's Hernandez now. Hernandez trying to pick out Ekra. That one's taken away by Sakiri. That one again taken away. Now Duckett knocked down, and no foul on the play. Hernandez with it. Ahead for 
Morgan Langley. Langley, he's taken down, and there will be a foul called there. You know, we saw Garrett Pettis coming back and around the halfway line and try to pick pick that ball up, get it into his feet as a target. You know, I'm sure Harrisburg would like to see Garrett post up a little bit higher up the field, uh, allow Islanders to maintain possession there in and around the, the uh, defensive end of Charlotte. We haven't seen uh, Garrett with many touches. He might be coming back just to try and get a touch on the ball. Sometimes forwards like to, you know, if they feel like they're not getting the touches and they're not getting the, the feel of the game, they'll come back even just to just give me the ball. I'll tap it back to you just to get a feel of the ball again. Turn by Ecker, top of the box. Nowhere to shoot yet. Ecker's still with it, still at the top of the box. Now it's taken away. And Cox trying to get to that one, was able to win it. Now the call coming is going to go the other way. Yeah. Dangerous at the top of the box, though, there by uh, Ekra. Almost inside the box and almost getting a call as well. Yeah, Rafael Cox there. Good tackle. Probably just showed a little bit too much of the bottom of his studs. Uh, referee calling it the other way here. We're going to pause. We're in our 21st minute, 0-0. Zero, zero. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxson Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two. It's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. Nice switch out here to Herrera. Herrera trying to drive it inside again there for Yates. Herrera again across for Sakiri. That one knocked down. Yates tries to play it back for Herrera. Burrell gets a foot on that one. Now Cox able to clear it out. McLaughlin was able to pick his head up just in time to see that player coming. Nice job by Herrera tracking back. McLaughlin still with it. McLaughlin top of the box sends it through for Pettis. And that one just a hair too far. Great run by McLaughlin. And there you see it, and the pace, uh, the desire to, to press forward and get to goal. Here's Yates the other way. This one for Ty Tyrone, and that one, again, a little too far off. Drew Yates still with it. Now it's taken away on the far side by Burrill. And now that one will go out of bounds. It will be a goal kick for the Islanders, I think. That go off the end line. No, it's going to be throwing. And it's, you know, so far, been pretty impressed with Burrell sitting in his new his new role. Uh, he's been able to break up some plays, uh, win balls, and catch Charlotte on the counter. Um, so it looks like he's fitting in there well so far. Yeah, he has. He's done a good job of commanding the middle there, and I like uh, I like seeing Hernandez off sides there. Hernandez a little higher because he's able to receive the ball. He's a little bit bigger player and distribute it more. And Burrell, just, he, he just seems like he's got a, a great defensive mind back there when he has to be. So he's able to switch that offense and defensive mind off and on and off uh, pretty confidently. Here comes Tyrone down inside the box, and that one's going to be knocked away, and it will be a throw-in. USL Pro, every USL Pro regular season and playoff game will be streamed live on YouTube this year. Uh, features include DVR, chat, social media interactivity. Subscribe for free to the City Islanders YouTube channel today. Also, don't forget to find them on Twitter as well, at USL Pro on Twitter for all the latest information. And, of course, uh, you can watch all these games on demand and live throughout the season here for Harrisburg. And don't forget to tune in to your Charlotte Eagles uh, page as well and sign up uh, and become a fan of their page uh, throughout the season and watch uh, Charlotte at home and on the road. What's great about the USL Pro is you can catch every single game online live and they're also posted on demand after. So if you can't get to the games, watch them on your phone. 
your tablet, your computer. It's a great uh, new uh, partnership with the uh, USL Pro and YouTube. And it's great to see the USL taking those steps to, uh, you know, strengthen the league, uh, make it more professional, um, just make it an overall better environment, atmosphere for the players, the fans, uh, everybody involved. Um, it's been great to see this growth of this league here in the past, you know, three to four years, which has really exponentially grown. Um, you know, a lot of it, it's happening below radar. Yeah. Uh, you know, mainstream media isn't really picking up on it, but, you know, you got 20,000 people in Sacramento every weekend going to a game. In Orlando, nearly the same. It's uh, tremendous. It's fun to be a part of, fun to watch happen. Yates and Ekra battling hard, and the final foul comes from Ekra. Going to be a restart here quickly, right down the center of the field. And that one just touched by, and a nice job by Banner to keep that one in play, but off the sideline. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. That quick restart in Charlotte almost catching Harrisburg off guard. You know, Banner, he didn't shut off mentally. You know, he, he stayed uh, turned on uh, and was able to respond there. Uh, looked like the rest of the Islanders' back line had kind of uh, put their head down and were re getting ready for the restart. Yep. Uh, Banner able to stay awake there. Not a bad uh, idea, too, because, you know, most players are used to, okay, that part of the field, we're going to settle down and we're going to take a crack at it. We're going to set up a play and see if we can go at it. That quick restart is something you don't see too often from right there. And uh, nice job by Charlotte. Almost got one out. Oh, what a great by ball by Duckett there to find Herrera. Good build up here from Charlotte. And that one just too far for Dixon. Nice uh, nice couple passes here, but you're right. What a great swing from the back. Bread started 60 years ago with a loaf of bread and a lovable bear. Today we're the most widely distributed bread Looks bread like Morgan Langley and McLaughlin have kind of switched sides a little bit. Like Jimmy Brown's coming back into the center here a little bit, in looking for some more Save touch and seeing what can happen. This is dangerous Stormboy here. Stormboy We've seen this roll. a couple times now in the quick counter by Charlotte. Harrisburg able to defend against that one nice as well. And for the most part, Charlotte's been winning the ball, picking the ball up in the middle of the field and, and looking to counter from that area. Uh, you know, kind of tells you Charlotte or Harrisburg need to tighten things up a little bit through the midfield. Um, like to see Hernandez maybe get on the ball a little bit more. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Is it a Harrisburg throwing? No, they actually uh, gave it to Charlotte. It looked like it went off the defender when Morgan Langley and him were going down. But either way, Charlotte with the throwing here. Dixon will put this one in play. Now Charlotte able to clear this one out. That one taken down, dangerous. And streaking in there was Guzman trying to get inside. Actually, I take that back. That was Thompson. So Burrell out of the back now. McLaughlin gives it back. They'll switch it now for Ekra. Nope, it's going to come all the way over for Marquez. Ekra coming deep to get that ball as well. We've seen him and Burrell. Playing more of a defensive role a little bit here. And we saw Hernandez dropping back as well now. So you see Hernandez with the ball deep now. And Burrell has moved forward a little bit. And a lot of movement here by the Islanders. A little bit of change up. I'm actually liking it. I think there's been a lot more creativity coming out of this. Uh, especially coming out of the back in that build up. Yeah, well, you know, it helps the center backs get themselves you know wide to the edge of their box and allows that space to open up through the middle there for hernandez to come back on the ball and you want that to happen you want hernandez to be able to come back on the ball he's a creative player for real to be able to come back on the ball you know turn have time to be able to play forward um, and that comes from that shape of that back four uh spreading the field outside backs getting as high as they can high up the field uh, just opens up that middle of the field and allows those central creative central midfielders really to operate uh, and get things moving forward. So Islanders with a corner kick here. Hernandez will take the kick. Swings this one in right in the center of the box and Duckett is there to get ahead on that one. Pretty hard to beat him inside the box. He's uh, tall, lengthy, and very quick to get up in the air. Nice ball sent out here. It's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Ekra almost Guzman getting a touch on that one. Jimmy McLaughlin getting a touch on it. McLaughlin, I should say. 
Ekra doing a nice job of being able to get a play on that one. Banner leaves it now for Hernandez. I like the patience uh, from Harrisburg right now to uh, Jason. Um, something I'm not used to seeing. I mean, we've seen them knock the ball around, but they seem to be knocking the ball around with more patience as well. Not forcing anything, really picking their heads up and trying to find the right pass at the right time. Yeah, not, not as direct. And I think that comes with, you know, the personnel that you have on the field. Players that like to keep the ball on the ground. Um, players that aren't constantly looking for the ball over the top. Uh, technical players, you know, gifted players that, you know, like to combine and play with one another. You know, Charlotte, you know, they're, they're very similar in that. Uh, you know, so both teams, you know, you heard Bill Betcher say it earlier, uh, both teams pretty similar uh, in the types of players and the types of style that they uh, play with. And I was going to say the same type of patience you see out of Charlotte, kind of even on the defending side, that when Harrisburg is knocking that ball around, they're confident in not chasing and waiting for that play to start to develop before they're running. You know, instead of chasing the game, they're, 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 they're comfortable with just setting in and being patient and letting that ball come to them before they have to force anything. Herrera coming back for the ball. Again, Guzman with it now. You know, Stefan's mentioned earlier, they want to defend collectively as a group, which means you need all your players back behind the ball. Uh, offsides on the far side there. But you want to have all your players back behind the ball, uh, which means you're giving up a little bit going forward, uh, which, which kind of means, you know, Charlotte, they're going to look to counter. Um, and so far, you know, Tyrone Hall, he's done a great job of holding up that ball, getting into those channels, and he's made it difficult for... Uh, for Cody Andrews back there and uh, Marquez. So we are in our 32nd minute, still knotted at zero. We're going to pause. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. It's here, whether you enjoy hunting, or fishing, discovering history, or cutting edge technology. It's here, from delicious chocolate to professional sports, wild roller coasters to endless shopping. It's here, from fine dining to home style cooking, exciting nightlife to small town charm. Dauphin County has it all. No surprise, we were voted the 12th most livable region in the nation. It's here, you should be here too. Tonight's Powerball jackpot has an estimated annuity of $80 million. So play today. Pennsylvania lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians every day. Players must be 18 years or older. Back to action here is down inside. Langley trying to get that one across is going to be played out. It'll be another corner kick here for the Islanders. This will be their third of the contest now. Good job by Morgan Langley there, making that defender commit, trying to get that service in the box. Great play from him. And here, here's where the Islanders can be deadly. That one just over the head of Morgan, looking for a call. Able to play this one back for Burrell. Burrell dangerous from here, serving this ball in. Swings it down in front of that one. Knocked out, though, by Sakiri. Ecker's going to put it right back in the box and can't able to pull that one out of the air. And quickly out now for Herrera. Sakiri, been impressed with him in the center of the field uh, so far. Uh, Jason, he's been uh, very busy, very productive. I thought uh, he's been finding the ball and he's been doing a great job distributing. Yeah, he seems to be a, a guy who's a worker. Um, great work ethic, good level of energy and enthusiasm for the game. Uh, you're absolutely right. So far, we've seen every aspect of that. Likes to go and look for the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's good going forward. Likes to get the ball and, and combine with players getting forward. Or another smaller player out there like Herrera. He's only five foot six, 150 pounds. Last year he played with RVAFC. I'm not sure where that is, Jason. Are you familiar with that? Um, I'm not. Neither am I. RVAFC, but a 
club in Africa somewhere, possibly. But he's uh, played 13 games so far this season. He's got four points, got a goal and two assists. So, uh, as you can see, at least that I've seen, he is an outstanding player in the center of the field for Coach uh, Mark Stevens, or Stephens, I should say. And um, been fun to watch. I love players that uh, look for the ball, creative on the ball, distribute well. He's got, uh, got a lot of energy, just like Herrera does. Cox comes out, wins that one. Ekra now. Jan Ekra able to find McLaughlin. McLaughlin waits outside for Cox, and Herrera's going to get there. McLaughlin taken down. Guzman almost has that one taken away by Ekra. Tyrone gets around Marquez, and Banner able to send that one, though, over for Marquez here. Here's Cox again with it. See that speed on that uh, transition game for Charlotte. Cox again to the outside. Jimmy McLaughlin in for Burrell now. I'm sorry, that was uh, Langley rather. That ball taken away. Here comes Guzman now for Charlotte Guzman has Tyrone. Guzman going to touch it to the outside, looking to try and get inside the box. Does, swings it to the back post, and that one just wide of the mark. Great run there, though, by Guzman for Juwan Guzman for the Charlotte Eagles, Jason. Yeah, you, you see there, her hand is kind of giving the ball away cheaply there through the midfield. You know, a little bit of the body language. You'd like to see a little bit more uh, sense of urgency through play and trying to keep the ball. Um, her hand is just kind of getting caught on the back foot there and getting caught on the counter. And we've seen that twice now from Charlotte, creating some pretty decent opportunities just through the play through the midfield for Harrisburg. A little too lackadaisical when they're on the ball. Uh, the tempo, the passing, and the movement off the ball should just be a little bit quicker for them. Nice pick away there by Burrell. And Langley trying to slide that corner across the front. The we'll pick up another league. corner kick here. That'll be their fourth. And uh, my daughter, Miss Google, we'll just call her Miss Google for the night. Uh, the uh, the RVAFC team is actually an NPSL team uh, league, and it's out of Richmond, Virginia. Well, so tells you how much I. Yeah, really. I know. Isn't that kind of closer to your neck of the woods? Or? <laughs> it is. It must be a new team, NPSL team. Yeah. But, you know, great MPSL coming in and uh, creating some teams and uh, really just strengthening that overall structure of, of U.S. soccer that's been needed for so many years. You know, in Charlotte last year celebrating 20 years. 20 uh, years? As a club. That's fantastic. You know, originating in 93 as a, you know, semi-professional and you know turning professional a few years later but uh, just that's over, fantastic overall their you know their dedication they're you know they're a club that's been around for a number of years and uh it looks like you know next year they're gonna you know a few structural changes but i'm pretty sure that that overall strength of the club will will remain um and look forward to seeing how they go through this transition over these next couple years referee having to stop twice there and some extracurricular activity going on between some players. Redirected in front, and it's a goal. Is that an own goal? I had to wait to see if there was goal an offside file. Goal kick, goal kick. Looks like it's a uh, ball Come just on. wide. Oh, did it go wide of the mark? Yeah, just wide. Goal is denied. Wow, that looked like it went in the oh, goal. Offsides, <laughs> offsides is going to be the call. So as that ball comes out, boy, I don't know where the offsides comes from there. That definitely went in the net. There was two players behind. Looked like Langley got the touch in there. Either way, 0-0. Charlotte dodges a bullet there. Jonathan Anthony. Congratulations. You've won two tickets to an upcoming USL Pro home match. Pick up your winning tickets at the merchandise stand. Thanks, and remember, you can follow us on Twitter, too. Long throw, this one said, and we'll take a look at that one more time. The ball's going to be swung in here. Yeah, that went off of Morgan Langley, who was in an onside position, so I'm not sure what the referee was seeing there, unless they thought that it went off of, um, it looked like it was uh, Can't tell if that went in, uh, Cody Andrews. It was in the net. the pipes there, but uh, 
We need that goal line technology, don't we? See if I guess maybe it was wide. From the replay, it did look like it went in the goal, though. Let's see if FIFA can spring for the... We'll take a look and we'll slow it down here. Ball comes in if we stop it right there. Morgan Langley touches the ball. He's on sides. I think they just call the goal kick. That ball comes in. You know what? That is outside the goal. Yeah. So a good call by the officials there. <laughs> on the initial replay, it looked like it was inside that post. Islanders coming down again here. Hernandez still with the ball. Slides it through for McLaughlin. That one's going to be too far for him. McLaughlin trying to keep it in play. That one's going to go out now for a throw-in for the Charlotte Eagles. 41st minute, still knotted at zero. It's been the contest that I expected. Not as chippy as I'm used to seeing between these two teams, but a really good game. I think both teams are moving the ball well. They're defending well. They've had some opportunities to attack the goal. So I think both coaches at this point looking to try and get themselves back on track are, are looking at a pretty good game on both sides of the ball. Yeah, both teams so far, you know, good opportunities. Um, and, you know, both teams have been pretty unfortunate not to find the back of the net. But that's what they've struggled on all season long. Now, you know, defensively, they, they didn't give up the early goal. Now somebody's got to start putting some on the uh, on the uh, the old scoreboard here to uh, neither team can afford to get out of here with a point. They need, they need to pick up three points, that's for sure. We're in our 42nd minute, still 0-0. We're going to pause. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two, it's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. Tremendous shot there by Charlotte. And I'm not sure, Jason, if that one did not cross the line on the ball coming down. In a second here, we'll wait and we'll get a replay for you. We'll wait and see what happens on this play here with Yates along the sidelines here. Yates still with it, sends it across. And now able to work this one out. We'll take a look at the replay quickly here on that shot. That shot will come in here in an absolute blast. Ball comes in, and it does not. But, boy, it was close. Very close. What an opportunity for Charlotte, and what a tremendous strike. And that one definitely caught Nick Noble. Ball coming down inside, but offside's flag is up. And I think the referee's going to say play on. Yes, he is. The referee is playing on. It's like he might have been on size here making that run. I'm not sure what the... Well, line. the referee put up his flag. Yeah, I'm not sure what the linesman and then saw. When the ball was cleared out and it came to an Islander player, or, or I think the referee thought it was coming to an Islander player and waved it off. Either way, no harm, no foul, right? Moving on, yep. Burrill looking for McLaughlin. Yeah, you, you see there that, that second ball opportunity to win. Uh, you know, centrally through the midfield the islanders just a little slow to react you know they got to have a little bit more sense of urgency to pick up those second ball opportunities to you know regain and retain that possession john necker so strong when he gets that ball like you just saw there he's yeah, yeah, able to shield himself Lord tremendous Lord strength that he has for such a small frame Tyrone battling hard on the far side with Burrill. And no call yet. They're both going out on the ground now. Not sure what the call is going to be here. Burrill 
and Tyrone want to go at it still here. And, you know, we saw a nasty game here this past week with lots of cards thrown out and stuff in the USL. Some coaches ejected, players ejected. We don't want to see any of that. Put the ball on the field and let's play soccer. Always makes it a little bit more exciting, though. It does. <laughs> you want to see that type of play in, like, the 30th minute and you're down a goal and you want to try and see if you can spark your team. Nike is a proud sponsor of USL Pro. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike soccer information. Also, visit the new team store for the uh, City Islanders. You can go and find all your team's apparel, gear, uh, flags, and uh, soccer balls, and shirts, and sweatshirts, and jerseys, and so on and so forth. You can go to CityIslanders.com to visit the store there, or you can come to a City Islander game and pick it all up right here at the store at the Skyline Sports Complex as well. CityIslanders.com. You can also go to the CityIslanders.com website to get your ticket to the next home game. That'll be Saturday, July 5th against Charleston. Game time is 6 o'clock. It's a 6 o'clock not start, not 7. And again, for tickets, go to CityIslanders.com. So after all of that, it looks like Charleston, I'm sorry, Charlotte, I'll get in the right game. Uh, Charlotte will have a restart here. And nobody coming out with a card, which is good. Well, I think there was a yellow card given there was given there uh, to Barrill. Okay. So now the chippiness. We saw it on one of the corner kicks, and we just saw it after that play there. And some more pushing and shoving going on here as they get ready for this restart as well. Herrera is going to swing this one in. Herrera drives this one near the back post, but too far. Going to be a goal kick here for the Islanders and that's going to do it folks we played about an extra minute of stoppage time 0-0 after a half and Jason I think both squads going into the locker room if I'm the coach for Harrisburg or for Charlotte I'm pretty happy with the way the game's going right now I think we've left a little bit on the field in terms of a couple opportunities that maybe should have been converted but at the end of the day both of these coaches did not want to give up an early goal and moving forward, 0-0 zero, zero is exactly what they're comfortable with. Yeah, and I think, you know, Harrisburg, maybe a, you know, a couple lackadaisical mistakes there at the back, and allowing, uh, providing Charlotte an opportunity, you know, great save from Noble, one off the crossbar, another one. Uh, so, you know, Harrisburg's going to want to tighten up a little bit at the back, uh, you know, but that dynamic play from Harrisburg pushing forward, you know, trying to get in back behind the back four of Charlotte. Uh, I think that'll be the key for Harrisburg uh, going into the second half. Any subs on either squad coming out, you think, or do you think no, I don't, uh, you I don't, wait? I don't believe unless there's, you know, there's a knock or an injury that we don't know about. But I think, you know, uh, both, knowing both coaches and their mentality and having played for both coaches, I don't predict we'll see any changes, but it's soccer you never know exactly well there you see the score at the half charlotte zero harrisburg zero stay with us we'll have more usl pro soccer right here on invicta sports for you all of this presented by faulkner honda it's here whether you enjoy hunting or fishing discovering history or cutting edge technology it's here from delicious chocolate to professional sports wild roller coasters to endless shopping it's here from fine dining to homestyle cooking Exciting nightlife to small town charm. Dauphin County has it all. No surprise, we were voted the 12th most livable region in the nation. It's here. You should be here too. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two, it's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. And back on the island here. 
Harrisburg and Charlotte nodded at zero after one half a play. Wind's starting to come up. Sorry about that. And uh, before tonight's game, I had a chance to talk with two more players. It's uh, been a lot of fun talking to the City Islander players this season and getting to know them a little bit more and getting their insight on the league and how it's changed and so forth. Tonight we got a chance to talk with Nick Noble and Colin Zizzi. So uh, here's what they had to say. Sit back, relax, and we'll see you uh, after these interviews. All right, we're with Nick Noble here, the goaltender for the Harrisburg City Islanders. Nick, first of all, thanks for taking time to talk with yeah, us. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. So not the best season for you guys, but we're midway, right. so there's a long way to go. Right. Tell me a little bit about what you think you guys need to do to kind of turn this season around. Well, it's not like we haven't been competitive right. in, uh, in almost all the games, maybe ex except two. Um, we've been right there. Even the games we've lost, we've lost a lot of one nothing games. I thought we were the better team in you know, five or six of those, and, and then we were the better team in the 0-0 draws we had, so we could easily be above 500 here. So just need to find the back, uh, the back of the net and keep defending and you know, get some results. So you've been in, you've been here in Harrisburg for three years, but you've been in the league for a while. So you've seen this league change. Right. You've seen part of its infancy, right. and you've seen it grow through the two leagues that merged into the USL Pro. Now all of a sudden there's the influx of players come from the MLS and starting to partner with the MLS and stuff. Like, How have you seen the league grow over the last couple of years, and what has that meant to you as a player? I mean, it's grown tremendously. You see all the teams uh, coming into the league, and next year there's going to be a handful of teams. Cities want soccer teams now, and it's just it shows you how far U.S. soccer's come, uh, how far the MLS has come, uh, that they want to uh, get involved with it, and it's good to uh, you know get the different tiers of U.S. soccer. Looking into a crystal ball, where do you see the league going after all? I mean, this year especially, it seems like it's been an explosion. You know what I mean? So how, where, where do you see it maybe in the next five years? I mean, it's tough to tell. I mean, my first year was, what, two years ago, and it was still up you know we kind of look down upon but now it's you know it's a league that people want to be a part of and it's like you said it's been an explosion last year so it's really hard to tell where it's going to go um, but I know the MLS is going to continue to stay involved and probably more involved going forward. Did you ever think you'd see a USL game being played in front of 20,000 people? Oh no no no. <laughs> what was no. that like for you? Uh, it was exciting um, and our guys responded well to the excitement um, and you know and I think we'll start to see more of that you know you go down to Orlando you go to some of the bigger cities that you know draw well and it's it's a lot of fun to play in and I think teams coming into that see how those cities have done things and you know kind of learn from them and, and try to build the same atmosphere. Now it's World Cup season of course have you been uh, as blown away as I have with the kind of reception around the country? I mean, I know the first game the U.S. played, we turned on the TV, and there is probably the largest crowd I've seen in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, right. for a soccer game right. to watch on a big screen. No, I mean, it's exciting. Everyone gets behind. You know, it's it's kind of like the Olympics. Americans get behind their teams, uh, no matter really what the sport is. Um, but, you know, it kind of shows you how far soccer come as well. Um, you know, four years ago, there was kind of the same thing when we qualified, but nothing where it's been... Uh, lately and I think the team needs to continue to do well to keep uh, the American support. Really shows where soccer's come oh, even yeah. in the last four years. Yeah, definitely. It's okay, forward. now we're going to start getting some fun with you. What's your favorite food? Uh, I would say Mexican food. Um, I like all types of food, to be honest, but uh, if I had to choose, it would be Mexican food. Not on game day? Not on game day. We'll probably go a few days out on that one, but uh, yeah, I would st I'll, st I'll still say Mexican food. What's the craziest song that would be on your iPod for listening before a game? Oh, uh, I'm pretty low key when it comes to the music. It's I listen to a lot of country, even game day. Um, maybe some Garth Brooks. You know, it's not really the pump up music you'd expect, but it, you know, it puts me in a calm mind. That's cool. Well, Nick, it's it's always been a pleasure watching you play. We appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck the rest of the season. Thanks I, for talking I with appreciate us. Appreciate. Thanks right. for having me. You're welcome. All right, I'm with Colin Zizzi now, the defender for the Harrisburg City Islanders. Colin, thanks for taking time to talk with us. Thank you. I want to talk to you a little bit about the season. You guys struggling a little bit um, halfway through. Still time to get back on track and get back into, you know, possibly playoff contention. Tell me what you think you guys need to do to turn the season around. Yeah, we just feel like at this point we've been getting a little unlucky. Like last game in Montreal, we hit the post three times, lost 1-0. Uh, I think we've been playing pretty well as a team. We just want to keep that effort going, and hopefully things will start bouncing our way. Now you're one of the local players here, you know, a local product. What's that mean for you to be able to, you know, go off and play in college and then come back here and play at home? Yeah, it's nice. I'm always getting to play in front of friends and family, and not a lot of people get that opportunity. My family gets to come out to most of the games, so it's nice having their support. 
And you've seen uh, this league. You've been in it long enough to see the the change. Uh, you know the the old league with the new league and how much it's exploded, especially over the last year with the influx of the MLS teams and a lot of the foreign players and stuff. You know, tell me a little bit about how you how you see what's happened over the last three years. Yeah, I mean the quality of the league is just progressing and progressing, and you can see it every year. Um, you know, there used to be games you'd go in, you say, "Oh, we're definitely going to win this game," and you know, now every game's a grind and a struggle. The quality of the teams, and then especially with those interleague games with the MLS teams, every day you have to to come to play, or you're not going to get the result. Uh, and then also, you know, with the just the scheduling and the back-to-back -back games and everything, you know, it's it's really a grind with that all the teams being that high of quality. Do you uh, see that as a big positive because you're able to see, uh, get more eyeballs on you to, to possibly now have even a better chance than you did two or three years ago to get up into the big league, the MLS? I mean, you definitely see more people taking notice of USL, but, uh, you know, we just come out here and try and give a team effort, and, and you know, if somebody sees you, somebody sees you, but we're just focused on, on progressing as a team and, and getting results. All right, now we're going to get in some fun questions because it seems like everybody tells me they, they like hearing this from some of the players. What's your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time, Sandlot. Actually, okay. a baseball movie, yeah. but yeah, The Sandlot. That's cool. Why? I just I grew up watching it as a kid, and I just always loved it, and, and I loved it. It was just a, a group of guys out playing the game that they love and just having a good time. What's your favorite food? Um, probably sushi. Sushi and, and Italian okay. pasta. Neither one of those on game day, maybe Italian? Maybe Italian on game day, night okay. before. All right, last question. On game day, you're getting pumped up. What's the weirdest song or the song that most people wouldn't uh, think you would have on your iPod for pump up music? Ooh, uh, probably uh, it's a club song called World Hold On okay. by, by Bob Sinclair. Gotcha. Uh, it my, <laughs> it's always been a pump up song. So. Colin Zizzi, the defender for the Harrisburg City Islanders. Colin, thank, thank you so much. You. I wish you the best of luck the rest of the season. It's great seeing a local player here playing and keep up the good work as well. You You're welcome. Hunting or fishing, discovering history or cutting edge technology. It's here from delicious chocolate to professional sports, wild roller coasters to endless shopping. It's here, from fine dining to homestyle cooking, exciting nightlife to small town charm. Dauphin County has it all. No surprise, we were voted the 12th most livable region in the nation. It's here, you should be here too. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two, it's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance, too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. Back to City Island as we are at the half, 0-0 zero, zero here between Charlotte and Harrisburg. And Jason, uh, I think we're in for a good one for the second half. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the hurt first half. A couple opportunities for each team. With the first one here coming for Charlotte there, that was that scurry in front where Nick Noble right off the bat was hurt. And Yates had a couple opportunities to put that in the back of the net, but then the foul. And then here's the next one. This was an absolute blast by Newman as this one comes back, goes off the crossbar. Tremendous shot. Nick Noble definitely beat on the ball, but uh, uh, his friends step in and help him out with that one. And then again here, McLaughlin with the shot. That one goes off the post. Great opportunity, great run by Jimmy. And then this shot here that we thought went in was actually Burrill making the shot. It was deflected and went off the side of the net. And I think every single person in this place, except for the goalie and the kid standing back there, the ball boy, <laughs> knew that it went wide of the mark. Uh, so both teams with a couple opportunities. 
And as we take a look at the stats, the stats are pretty even across the board here other than corner kicks. Yeah, pretty even. You know, both teams have had opportunities. Um, you know, for Charlotte, it's been it's been more or less on that counter uh, style of play. Um, they've been successful going forward and having, creating those opportunities. Um, Harrisburg, so far, uh, you know, their opportunities have come from McLaughlin, from Langley, you know, picking up that ball in the defensive end of Charlotte and in running at players uh, you know so can they do more of that you know I'm, I'm pretty sure you know Stefan's at halftime has brought his guys in and, and discussed that and you know uh, described that as a threat uh, for his back four um, but you know can Harrisburg the second half can they start to develop uh, play going forward through their midfield um, so far we've been successful as we said with Morgan Langley and McLaughlin going forward I'd um, like to see a little bit more productivity out of Hernandez getting himself on the ball, uh, being able to play into Garrett Pettis, um, and, you know, seeing Jan Ecker, Ecker really put his stamp on the game. I don't think he's done that yet this season. I don't think he's really uh, given us everything. I think he's definitely, you know, put in the effort, um, but the game really hasn't shown up for him to really put his stamp on the game, and I'd really love to see that because he's a really technically gifted uh, player who works hard for his team um, and I'd really like to see things come together for him more through the midfield in Charlotte Charlotte uh, you know they're good they've done well at the back I think um, for the most part you know dealing with balls in the air um, you know but are they gonna be able to keep up that counter attacking style for a whole 90 minutes that's tough to do because uh, guys get tired um, you know you're left to sit in and then you get stretched down uh, offensively as you go forward which can make trouble uh, for the you know the back line of Charlotte um, you know as they become exposed as their midfielders get stretched so uh, I think for both teams um, a little bit more of the same here early on but definitely some changes will be coming into play the 60th minute I think so we're just about ready to get underway here for our contest both teams back on the field everybody getting ready to go Opportunity to tell you the City Islanders will be home again Saturday, July 5th against Charleston. And game time, make sure you listen to this. Game time is 6 o'clock, not 7 o'clock. Islander games typically a 7 o'clock start. 6 o'clock on July 5th over the July 4th weekend. And for tickets, go to cityislanders.com. And don't forget, you can also find uh, their new online store at cityislanders.com. So you can order some of your jerseys and um, apparel and different... Uh, things that the Islanders have to sell. You can also get them on the island when you come out on July 5th to the game. Hope to see you here. So visit uh, the online store and get your tickets as well. USL Pro Soccer scores, stats, news, and more exclusively on USLProSoccer.com. And don't forget, you can find them on Facebook. Visit the USL Pro fan page on Facebook at Facebook.com slash USL Pro. Twitter, make sure to follow at USL Pro on Twitter for all the latest news and updates. And for Nike as well, Nike is a proud sponsor of USL Pro. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike soccer information. And finally, USL Pro on YouTube. Every USL Pro regular season of playoff game will be streamed live on YouTube in 2014. Features include DVR, chat, and social media interactivity. Interactivity, I should say. Subscribe for free to the City Islanders YouTube channel today as well as the Charlotte one. And uh, we hope that you'll take advantage of all of the social media stuff that's out there to keep up in touch with your favorite players and your favorite teams around the league here in USL Pro Soccer. So off the bat here, Islanders. Banner gets it ahead here for Morgan Langley. Langley able to get that in for Pettis. Pettis, another one that I uh, has not really gotten in the mix here early uh, in that, that first half. We uh, only called his name one or two times. We need to get him a lot more involved up top for receiving the ball and dishing off as well, uh, uh, Jason. Um, so if the Islanders can start to put some of that together, they might be able to squeak one out. And of course, Charlotte always dangerous on the counters you talked about, but we'll see if they can uh, use that counter to get a goal earlier here before they uh, wear themselves down as well. Marquez having to drive that one across. McLaughlin loses that one to Yates. Yates knocked down, but no call. Hernandez for McLaughlin now. McLaughlin turns, lays it back as the Islanders will reset. 
McLaughlin again. Trying to work down inside. He's taken down, and now the foul is called on the play. McLaughlin's still down on the play. Slow to get up, but he is. And the Islanders with a restart here and an opportunity to see if they can't put something together here on the, the restart, put a play together. Hard foul there as McLaughlin runs into number 16 there, Richard Dixon. Five foot nine, 170 pounds. Ball swung in near that back post. McLaughlin, or check that Langley rather, trying to get to that one is ball swung in by Hernandez. And both, both okay. teams so far, their service off of the, the set pieces, you know, have been, been a little bit more on the poor side. Um, probably not up to standard and quality that both teams are used to. Uh, you know, and, and both teams really, you know, teams that can produce goals off of set pieces. Uh, so I think, you know, that's something both teams need to think about. Uh, the quality of their set piece. Foul's going to be called here against Marquez. And something said because the official was not happy. Cody, <laughs> Cody Andrews rather there getting in the mix. Darth Newman, uh, the head official for today's game. So restart here for Charlotte. We'll take a look at the replay here. Yeah, Cody had his arms wrapped That's right around, right around from him. I don't see much of a foul there. That it looks like, you know, Tyrone Hall doing what he should do is, you know, make the most of it. Um, but I know. think it was when, you know, Cody wrapped his arms around. Down inside, that one dangerous. Yeah, Tyrone Hall Ooh. there again, you know, creating problems for the back four of Harrisburg. He's been relentless, you know, he hasn't really dropped off um, in his productivity. He's, he's really looking to push things for his side. He gets on the inside shoulder too of uh, Marquez. So the Islanders dodge a bullet there. This one intended for Pettis, Pettis looking back but Duckett's going to win this foot race it comes all the way back for Alec Can. You know, you know, Garrett Pettis has done a great job so far, you know, he's working hard but we'd like to see, you know, him maybe uh, direct play a little bit more, initiate the type of ball that's to be played forward. He's a little bit too reactionary as to what the other guys are going to do around him, and he's responding, having to respond to that. But can he dictate the type of ball that's played forward into his feet um, that allows his team to, to get forward and, and gain yards up the field? Nice ball in here for Tyrone. Tyrone streaking in, almost able to get on the end of it. It's going to be knocked back for Nick Noble now. Noble, not sure if he could pick that one up, I think. Acro for Langley. Marquez. Burrell for Hernandez. Hernandez looking for McLaughlin. Nice job defensively there for Charlotte. Job winning that back by Sakari. Newman sends it back. Pettis almost coming up with that one. Ball sent ahead. Ekra trying to gather it in. Marquez now leaves it back for Cox. Over now for Andrews. Cody Andrews for Banner. Anders working the ball around here. That one chipped in too far. Sakari sends it ahead. Here's. Yates with it again. Yates knocked down on the play. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the right idea there by Morgan Langley, looking to play that ball around the corner into, into Hernandez, into who's advanced into a little more of a target area. It, it, Hernandez needs to be looking to combine there with Langley, understanding that Langley's going to be trying to play that ball. He's under pressure. He's got a player on his back. Um, he needs a sense of urgency from a player like Hernandez, especially to be looking to get on the ball, especially in those types of areas. Drew Yates on the ball, sends it across now for Sakari. Sakari sends it in for Newman here. That was Thompson, rather. Apologize. 
McLaughlin will hold it up, sends it back for Cox. Cox with an awful lot of orange jerseys around him and able to find Noble. Noble will work it out, quickly ahead now for Banner. Banner, here's Hernandez, sends it through. Langley will get to this one, swings it across, but right into the hands of Can for the Charlotte Eagles. Alex Can will put this one, or Alec, I should say, Can will put this one back in play. Marquez gets up and wins the header on that one. Ball streaks all the way through. Able to get back and get a foot on that one was Matthew Gold. Gates still with it, has that one taken away. Hernandez able to find Morgan Langley now. Langley waits, checks. Now Morgan Langley trying to get around. Nothing there, no call, and they'll bring it the other way. Nice job by Duckett to move it out of the back. Here comes Charlotte now. Slide from behind, no call. A turn on the ball there by Thompson. Thompson for Yates. Yates still going at it. Nice battle in the center of the field there by Marquez. Or that rather Cody Andrews there coming up. Uh, I'm sorry, Andrews, yes, you're right. Did a great job there defensively. They were through. Uh, Yates, good player who likes to go forward and combining with his target. All gyms uh, are not created equal. Andrews able to predict uh, the, the play team. there. Gold's Gym, Lingolstown, where you'll feel welcome and at home. The official training gym of the Harrisburg City Islanders. No players no players warming up yet for either team. Have an upcoming event. The Harrisburg City Islanders. Good battle players, there, coaches, you're right, by Cody we'll Andrews. At community and corporate events. Visit cityislanders.com to fill out a request form today. You know, I've been calling... I've been calling Cody Marquez the whole game. <laughs> well, yeah, from this, well, Cody, Cody's the one with the with the beard there. Yeah, I the man beard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but from this distance, it can be difficult sometimes to. Here's Marquez on the ball now, over for Banner. Pace of this game slowing down a little bit from what we saw at the end of that uh, first half. Getting a little chippy at the end of that first half as well. Coming up on the 54th minute. I know Billy Betcher likes to make his subs around that 60th minute mark to start uh, cycling them in. Zakiri with the ball over the top for Tyrone, and that one's going to come right to Nick Noble. Cody Andrews with it now. Andrews ahead for Cox. Left off for Hernandez. So we'll be switched over for Banner. Nice overlap here for Banner. Banner inside for Morgan Langley. Langley trying to get around the outside, and he's going to be called for the foul. To the outer foul was number 15, Morgan Langley. Free kick. Morgan's Charlie. starting to get frustrated that he's getting Your some balls. He just can't get around in the back. Ball comes through, tips it through. Duckett does a nice job of just slowing him up enough. Newman there able to you know, shield Langley off the ball. And, you know, as the score stays 0 0, the frustration is going to show up uh, through the players and body language. Both teams desperately looking for those three points this evening. Thompson slides that one through. Yates trying to get to it. Comes back for Noble. And Nick Noble will send this one deep. And there again, Cody Andrews showing up at the right place at the right time. Uh, able to break up that play as uh, Charlotte moved forward. Yates all over the field. You're starting to see him slow down just a couple steps here. A lot of running in the second half for Drew Yates. Yates flicks that one on. Here's Herrera now. Herrera slides it right across the top. Here's Yates with it now. Yates takes a step, and that one's going to be blocked. Yates still with it. Plays it outside now. This one chipped to the far post. Shot taken, and that one goes in. 1-0. 
Sakiri puts it in the back of the net for the Charlotte Eagles. Charlotte goal scored by number two. Yeah, unfortunate there. Harrisburg's back line got caught ball watching just a little bit. Uh, losing track of their man. Kiri floating to the back post. Tremendous play. We'll see who it is. It's actually number nine. That's Thompson. What a great ball across and a great finish by Sakiri. You know, just that, that lack of communication there between Cox and Andrews. You know, kind of left them searching for answers there. For getting the most of your money, you're better with blue. It's just when the game was slowing down a little bit, all of that action took place. Now the Islanders got to go chase this game to try and pick up this uh, a goal and see if they can't pick up a second. Both teams fighting awful hard to get the three points out of this game tonight. Drew Yates again with it. Nice tackle by Jan Ekra. Come up with the ball without uh, getting too much touch on Drew Yates on that one. Ahead for Pettis now. Pet is still with it. You know, that, that that's the ball right there that Garrett needs to be able to hold. And, you know, be strong, hold it. Uh, you know, put Langley into space, bring Ekra up the field, give him the ball, allow your team to maintain possession. He's got to be the man, put his foot on it, use his strength and hold it. Here's Morgan Langley inside the box, has that one knocked away. Burrell's going to come up with it, though. Burrell's still with it. Burrell across the top for Hernandez. Hernandez. Tries to slide this one in, and a nice job by Duckett to get a foot on this one, and he'll clear it out for Charlotte. No, he does not. It goes off of Hernandez and out of bounds. Langley looking for the call, but uh, yeah, you can be sure he's going to keep looking for those calls oh, yeah, the rest definitely. of the evening. He'll get a look at it again here as he comes down inside, loses the ball, really nothing there. Nothing there at all. Not much of a case. Ekra sends this one ahead. Pleasure. Hard Muscleman play from behind coming through Hernandez. Tyrone sends it across for Sakiri. Sakiri, we talked about how busy he was in the first half and gets rewarded with that goal. Nice give and go here. Newman's going to find Thomas outside on the, the left side here now. Thomas picking up an assist on that goal. A nice ball sent across, and there's going to be a foul called against Marquez. Dangerous opportunity here for Charlotte. Quick restart. Shot taken there by Thomas. So it's 1 0 here, and we are in our 59th minute. We're going to pause. Stay with us. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two, it's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance, too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. All sent back here. Marquez will send it all the way back for Noble. Islanders have some players up off the bench as we're getting close to that 60-minute mark. You know, as the game goes on, could we see Burrell maybe push into Geddes' or Pettis' spot, maybe? Um, bring De Silva so, off the bench, maybe. Uh, the hold into that, that central midfield role, allow Burrell to get forward. Long ball over the top. Cox trying to chase this one down, and He'll beat Herrera to that ball. Noble. Nice job by the Islanders to clear that out of the zone. Here's Jan Ekra with it now. Ekra trying to get a turn. You see that strength that Jan Ekra has to just ward off. You know, you're right. It's Guzman. a great strength, but Jan needs to play quicker. One, two touch, especially there in the 
in the middle of the middle of the park needs to quickly one two touch out the other way and get on with it um, let's just spend maybe a little bit too much time on the ball and you know cr creates for some scrappy moments Herrera wins that ball sends it back knocked ahead for Drew Yates now Yates leaves it for Sakiri Newman swings it to the other side Herrera Herrera another player we haven't heard a lot of in this game that uh, typically is a big leader and a big force out there for them but uh, haven't had a lot of opportunities on the ball for them in this contest Sakiri the Iron Man for this game, that's for sure, is that ball almost getting to him. Hernandez with some numbers, has McLaughlin outside, had a chance to send Jimmy on a run, could not see him. Burrell, nice job of holding that ball, settling it down. Jan Ekra now for Burrell. Burrell sends it through, and that ball better played to Banner on the outside. And now the quick counter the other way. Here's Thomas, sends it for... A run down this near side, and that one's going to go out of bounds off of uh, Tyrone Hall. But a dangerous opportunity on the counter there. So Jamal, Jamal Hardware getting ready to come into game number five for the Islanders. We'll see who he will enter the game for. Yeah, I think you see him just coming right in for Pettis, maybe, up top. Or, you know, we'll see. Hardware is not necessarily that, that that lone striker target type of player. Um, but do you bring him in the middle and put uh, Burrell up top like you were talking about? It's a possibility. Um, you know, Burrell's that type of player that can hold it, bring people into play a little bit more effective possibly than, than Pettis has been on that role. And quite a battle on this near side for Morgan Langley in number five, Tyler Newman. Yeah, Newman's done a great job to deal with Langley's pace thus far. Langley's been able to get in behind a couple times, um, but so far this half, he's been able to frustrate Langley. Cody Andrews sending it ahead. Here's McLaughlin now. Yeah, it's a good moment for Harrisburg. You know, Charlotte's kind of taking their foot off the gas here a little bit. Um, not something you necessarily want to do on the road. Uh, but, you know, Harrisburg would be wise to kind of push themselves a little bit here this next 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I think there's a goal out there waiting for them if they do so. So it's actually Jan Ekra that will exit the game. And Hardware will come in for him. So five for seven. He replaces number seven, Jan Ekra. Jamil Hardware. Substitution also for the City Hours entering the game. Not yet. A couple more substitutions to come as well. Referee not allowing that second sub. Also up off the bench is Boggs for Charlotte. He'll be coming in for the Charlotte Eagles. And DePrima for the Harrisburg City Islanders. So a couple different substitutions. Both teams starting to go to the bench here in the 65th minute. And let's see, Hernandez will exit the game. And DePrima will come into the game. Number 14. Not a very, not a very effective game. Uh, Christian Hernandez uh, this evening. Really, you know, a player of his quality and his abilities. You really like to see him really impose himself on the game a little bit more, though, uh, than he's done. Um, I think that would make a huge difference for this City Islanders side. So Boggs is in the game, and he gives a. Break to Tyron right, Hall. That's who that had a, uh, a productive game. And that's for sure in a productive day. So we'll see what Boggs does. Zach Boggs on loan from the New England Revolution. Fresh legs to go at the Islander defense. And Harrisburg making some changes. Getting some fresh legs to see if they can't create some chances here. That far, too far for Banner and out of play. Charlotte with the throw. Newman will take the throw. Sends this one in for Boggs. Boggs trying to get to this one in the corner. He's actually going to play it off of Marquez, and we'll have a corner, corner kick, kick now for, for Charlotte. the Charlotte Eagles. 
And I think uh, the Silva at this moment might be a good change to to bring on. Um, we saw in the past, over the past month anyway, uh, he's got that creative ability. Um, likes to get the ball and combine and that quick style play through the middle of the field uh, really allows. Oh, Herrera with a great strike, and guess who it is again? Oh, and offsides. And Sakiri almost had his second of the game. What a beautiful ball sent you across know, by Herrera, though. And that's just the type of player Herrera is. Uh, looking to slot that ball to the back post, to that on-running runner there. Unfortunate to be called offsides. Islanders with a good counterattack here, but uh, ball played too far by Hardware. But what a great opportunity here at the other end for Charlotte. Yeah, just off the corner kick. Great first time ball heads up by Herrera. Not many players are thinking that or looking to do that. But uh, great presence of mind there by Jorge Herrera. Here's Langley now trying to take it in again. Langley with a shot. That one blocked. Pettis gets a play on it. Down for Burrell. Burrell. Across the top, still looking. Brill gets a shot and not able to get much behind that one. And that one pops up and out of play. So we are in our 67th minute. Charlotte up one nothing. We're going to pause. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Tier, whether you enjoy hunting, or fishing, discovering history or cutting edge technology. It's here, from delicious chocolate to professional sports, wild roller coasters to endless shopping. It's here, from fine dining to homestyle cooking, exciting nightlife to small town charm. Dauphin County has it all. No surprise, we were voted the 12th most livable region in the nation. It's here, you should be here too. And a foul called there on hardware, so a restart here for Charlotte. Take a look at the foul again here on the replay. How long the end, hardware just stepping in. And then right there, after the ball was played, hardware following through the player. It looks like we're going to have another substitution coming up here shortly for the Islanders. So it looks like Silva is going to enter the game. And this is a player that I love to watch. Explosive, creative player. This one just about over the head. Nice job getting up in the air on that one. Number 16, Richard Dixon. Okay, Dixon there reading the play very well. Uh, possibly Hold saving uh, Charlotte go. a goal. All right, fans, if you're holding your cards in the air and you're seated in, tonight the third row. Here's Herrera the again. Herrera you're head for Boggs. Boggs leaves it for Yates. Okay. Yates well, drives that across. Thompson did a good job of bringing that down, but not able to control it. Langley gets the turn around the corner. Morgan Langley having to do a lot of running in this game uh, tonight, uh, Jason. Uh, you know, that's, that's the style that suits him. He likes to get the ball to his feet, you know, travel 20, 30 yards uh, to try to create something. That ball coming flying out of play, and I'm glad to see that we still see our camera there. It like <laughs> came right at him. <laughs> so, little guy here in front of us with the ball. Is that a yes? Yes, we have a winner. I'm sure that gave our cameraman Chris up top a scare. <laughs> so it looks like, looks like Burrill has pushed on forward. You know, Pettis making way for Silva there. Um... So Burrell filling a, filling a few spots here, filling a few different types of shoes uh, in this game this evening from uh, you know, more defensive midfielder, attacking midfielder, and now uh, he's gone in up front. And now it looks like he's been uh, pulled, up, pulled up injured. So can make difficult for these substitutions, something that you know, I can't predict. Hardware still trying to take it to the goal, and now this one's going to be played up and out of bounds, and they'll attend to Burrell on the far side. That's unfortunate. Betcher just made that change, Thank that you. substitution, and uh, it's unpredictable as soccer is. You hate to see that happen, especially you know as a manager just making that type of change. 
Looked like it may have been clipped along the back of that uh, hand, that uh, the um, Achilles. Achilles. So they're attending to him over there. Don't forget, City Islanders' Raffles next home game will be Saturday, tickets. July 5th against Charleston. Game time is 6 o'clock. Don't forget, you can get your tickets the by going to CityIslanders.com. And you can also go to CityIslanders.com to visit their new online team store. The new 2014 team gear is available there on the website. And it's also sold on game days at the team store located at the Skyline Sports Complex on City Island. So come on out and get those. Good time for us to tell you about USLProSoccer.com. Score stats, news more exclusively on USLProSoccer.com. Also, USL Pro is on Facebook. Every USL Pro Soccer uh, regular season game, or should say a playoff game, will be streamed live on YouTube in 2014. Features include DVR, chat, and social media interactivity. Subscribe for free to the City Islanders YouTube channel today, along with the Charlotte Eagles. Nike, as well, is a proud sponsor of USL Pro. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike Soccer information. And Barrill is not able to come back into the contest here. So the Islanders make another sub. Substitution for the City Islanders entering the game, number 25, Robbie Dershang. So Dershang is in the game eight, now for Burrell. Burrell, and that's a big loss because Burrell has been very active in this contest and moving him forward may have been that spark that the Islanders needed. We'll wait and see if another person can step up as that ball taken away by Dershang on the far side and Charlotte able to clear this out to midfield. Marquez sends this one ahead. That one knocked down. Boggs. Newman. Check that rather. Thompson, I apologize. Now Newman, or Guzman. That ball will go up and out of play for an Islander throw-in. So we are in our 73rd minute. Islanders looking to see if they can't come up with the tying goal. No call on that play there. Sakiri come up with it. Nice ball sent ahead there by Herrera. Yates sent it across for Sakiri. Nice slide in there and foul is coming down through. Morgan Langley takes a, either like, a foot or a knee. It looks like he might have taken the knee right to the head. Ball yeah. comes through. Good tackle. Ooh, the follow through of the foot catches him in the back as uh, Tyler Newman slid over the top of him. So a restart here for the Islanders. Like to see that two players standing there talking with each other and laughing. Number 13, Matthew Gold for Charleston, or Charlotte, I should say. And number 18, Jimmy McLaughlin. Two players just out there having a lot of fun. Playing the game they love. Ball sent ahead. Herrera leaves it back. Nice ball through. Actually intended for Yates. That one was knocked down. Herrera will go over to take the throw. Actually, he will not. He'll leave it off. So Charlotte. Looking to start to possess a little bit more, try and wear down this Islander defense. Force the Islanders to chase the game a little bit more. Sakari. Voice ring. Providing business class phone systems without the capital expense. Doing Freeman doing a nice job following through on that one. Was not able to keep it. Here's Duckett now for Charlotte. Kiri sends it across. Yeah, Sakiri's done a great job for Charlotte tonight. Just sitting in that holding role, uh, able to break up plays uh, as Harrisburg moved forward. Um, I just like how he's constantly going, looking for the ball. He wants that ball. He wants to make things happen. He's constantly looking for a way to be in the play every time. And he gets a goal out of it, but he's also been very dangerous, creating some of these opportunities for 
the Charlotte Eagles. Here's Herrera on the ball as that one knocked away. Sakiri with it again. You know, Herrera has been relatively quiet this evening, but don't let that fool you. He's still the type of player that can show up in the waning moments of a game and uh, get himself on the scoreboard. 15 minutes left to play. That's a lot of time for Herrera to cause a lot of damage. And McLaughlin. Here comes Jimmy McLaughlin as he's knocked down off the play. We'll have a restart here. Good job by Dixon coming over. So a restart here for the Islanders. See if they can't try to put something together here. Desperately looking to try and tie things up, as you'll see here. Jimmy McLaughlin getting the run. Nice streak across the front. And Dixon just colliding with him. Picks up the foul. Islanders with a restart here. Got Silva, Cox, and DePrima over the ball. DePrima slides this one in, and that one headed away. And now cleared momentarily, actually. Hardware gets a shot, and that one blocks. So Hardware almost with an opportunity to put that in. It looks like it's going to be a corner kick. So opportunity there for the Islanders. Charlotte not able to clear. Good service there by DePrima into the box. Giving his, giving his side an opportunity. Challenge for that ball. Unfortunately, not to get a clear shot on goal. Hardware swings this one in low. That one headed away by Herrera. And DePrima comes over, gets to that one. Ahead for Jamal Hardware. Hardware waits across the top of the box now. Tries to check it back. Still with it. Hardware dances through. And now that ball taken away. And that one's going to be cleared out by Boggs for the... Check that rather. Actually, that's uh, cleared out by Gould. Gold for the Charlotte Eagles. Across the top. McLaughlin now. McLaughlin takes a step, looking for a shot. Gets the shot off. It's redirected off the back of Morgan Langley. You know, and, and what a and great, a play. great entry ball there from right, that banner here on this right phone, side. To be able to play into the top City of the box. Good pace on the pass. McLaughlin doing well to be able to get a shot off. Unfortunately, off the zone. Morgan, Langley Morgan Langley's having Hashtag a rough game. <laughs> having a rough game. There's been some frustrating moments for him this evening, but it's good to see him still uh, getting after it every opportunity he has. That ball sent out of play. It'll be a throw in again here for Charlotte. And we are in our 78th minute. Charlotte's still up 1 nothing. We're going to pause. At Faulkner Honda, we're proud to be a recipient of the 2013 Honda Presence Award, the 2013 Honda Finance Council of Excellence Award, and to be named one of the top 100 dealerships in the United States to work for by Automotive News. And how do we achieve these honors? By helping our customers find the right vehicle, making it affordable, and taking care of them long after the sale. Faulkner Honda on Paxton Street in Harrisburg, to be sure. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two, it's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance, too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. Tonight's Powerball jackpot, ha Powerball jackpot has an estimated annuity of $80 million. So play today. Visit your local retailer for tickets. Pennsylvania lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians every day. You must be 18 years or older to play. And the winner of the Tweet Your Seat, Mr. Jesus Gift Card, is Erica Ziegler. You may pick up your prize. Silva with the ball now for the Islanders. Islanders with just about 10 minutes and maybe a little stoppage time to see if they can't pick up a point out of this one. Both of these teams desperately need three points, so the Islanders, I'm sure, are not going to take their foot off the pedal, and Charlotte needs to keep pushing and not get too um, relaxed in the back here and, and settle in. So a foul charged here on Banner, so a restart for Charlotte. We'll see a man has been very busy. Thomas Thompson for the Charlotte Eagles. Saw that a moment ago. And Matt Banner. Those two have been battling it out on the right-hand side. Ball comes right into the two of them. The battle continues. <laughs> that ball gets played out of play. It'll be an Islander throwing. Take Amtrak's keep 
Marquez puts that one in for Silva. Silva looking. That one dangerously back for Hardware. Now back to Noble, played back by Marquez. Langley. Great we'll touch back for Banner. Touch by Morgan there, bring that ball out of the air. First touch, maintain possession. Showing a little bit of the skill, the Hawaiian skill there. <laughs> Comes Cody Andrews through the middle here. Andrews still with it, able to find McLaughlin. That ball stole away. Comes right back though to Andrews. Langley with some space trying to work it through. Morgan Langley able to find Banner and Banner pops that one up and wide. Is that tired legs? <laughs> Possibly. You know, tired or not, that ball needs to be on target or back across the face of goal. Uh, you can see him running back with his head up. Uh, you know, he definitely would like to have that one back. And usually a player of his quality can put that on frame. Entering the game. Number six, Colin Zizi. Morgan Langley exits the game. Colin Zizi comes into 15. the game. Morgan, Morgan has had uh, a busy Colin game, but I think a little frustrated. At times, Morgan uh, sometimes tries too much. In this game, maybe a little bit too much in some spots. But I think he's one of those team leaders and one of those guys that you got to feed off of him because his energy is just so infectious. Absolutely. Colin Zizzi in, in the back. Looks like they're pushing Banner forward a little bit more into the midfield role. Jimmy is gonna stay up top along with Jamal Hardware. Hey fans, don't let tonight's fun end at the sound of the final whistle. Join the team at one of the best bars in the area, Molly Brannigan's, located in downtown Harrisburg. You know, you got seven minutes left in the contest here. After the match. You know, Harrisburg really need to grow a sense of urgency here. Uh, really develop that and really, you know, start pushing forward and start making every opportunity possible to go forward, uh, more so than what they are. You know, there's still a point out there to grab for Harrisburg. Um, and nothing to lose by throwing numbers forward at this point. Yeah, you can lose one nothing or you can lose two nothing, but you gotta you gotta force yourself to try and it's still Tonight's three points to the other team. 1,835. Banner now Charlotte making his mark in the center of the field. Plays it outside for Cox. Ahead now. Turn on the ball. Working that far side of the field is Dushang. Dushang, I should say. Silva trying to work that inside. Hardware trying to win it back. It's going to come to Cox. Now Cox across for... Was that uh, Dupreme in the middle? And that one's going to go out of play. Charlotte will start to slow this game down with uh, every uh, chance at the throw-ins and goal kicks and throw in here for the Islanders. Need to get that ball quickly in play here. You're right, the urgency is not there even on these throw-ins to just get something quickly moving. It's, it's not, Chad, and, you know, I don't really understand it. You know, as a player, if I got to this moment in a game, I was doing everything I could uh, you know, to make things happen for the side. Um, you know, it was one or two players doing it, but collectively as a group, it needs to be across the board. Ball up and out of play, and that's going to be a throw-in here for Charlotte as that goes off of Zizzy. Newman will take the throw. Newman looks in for Boggs. Boggs able to settle this one down. Back for Newman. Thompson now. Thompson, another one that's been extremely busy in this contest and I think very effective on this left side for Charlotte all, uh, all game long. He's done well, very active. We've seen him in the middle of the field uh, in early on in this contest, but the second half, especially down this left side, he's kind of found a home out here, and he's been very dangerous along this left side, causing a lot of troubles uh, 
in the back for Marquez. And if, I mean, if you just look through the middle of the field, glance up, you know, you see this huge gap and you know, it's occupied by Guzman and Sekiri there for Charlotte. There's really no opportunity to build up through the middle of the field for Harrisburg. Everything's been having to be done, you know, with the width um, or bypassing through the midfield or an outside midfielder getting the ball and, you know, carrying it 30, 40, 50 yards at uh, Charlotte's back four. Um, you know, so where are the players that are going to identify themselves through the middle of the field for Harrisburg that can, that can combine and, and put their stamp on the game and dominate that central part of the field? So far, you were saying it earlier, Guzman, he's been that silent leader he has. For, for Charlotte. He's been there. He's made plays. He hasn't been, uh, you know, flashy or anything. But you know what? You know, he's able to do what he does because Sakiri goes and finds the ball and kind of commands the, the, the center of the field, which allows Guzman to float around and do what he needs to do even more importantly defensively. You know what I mean? So he has been very silent. And I think, I think Charlotte's done a good job of controlling this game in the middle of the field with those two. And, uh, and Harrisburg just has not been able to get anything pushed through the middle of the field. I don't think they've been effective at all really stretching the field. I think Charlotte's done a good job of stopping the outside runs as well. And right now, Harrisburg's got to find a way. Somebody's got to put this game on their shoulders. Great ball lacrosse, and Zizzy almost gets on the end of that one. Here's Silva. Silva trying to get to it. And just as I say that, it's almost Colin Zizzy off the bench. But what a great play. But somebody's got to do that. Somebody's got to say, I want this game, and they got to put it on their back. And they got you know, and that's exactly what we almost saw from Dershang taking that ball to the end and getting the cross. And Zizzy just about putting that one in. Okay. I'll tell you about this Charlotte defender. I'm not sure who who was defending there. That supporters join us in supporting our big What a great ball by Dershang. But Gino, wow, great, great, great job there. Just using his body kind of shield. Gino just coming Zizzy off the, the bench and getting into this game and, and making the biggest play of the game maybe right there to take uh, so give them the opportunity to take those three points. Waiting to see how much stoppage time as we're getting close. We're in our 89th minute now. Good job down in that far corner by Kevin Duckett. Or check that, that's Boggs actually. Boggs for uh, Charlotte. Killing some time down in there. Here's Nick Noble now. Noble needing to get this ball forward. Harrisburg needs numbers forward. Newman sends this one forward. That one knocked down by Marquez. Dangerous ahead for Boggs. And Cody Andrews able to get there. No. Now Marquez trying to get there. That one knocked ahead. Noble out of the goal. He's able to find Silva now. Silva ahead for McLaughlin. McLaughlin trying to get a turn. Leaves it for Silva. Silva finds Dershang now. Dershang. Dershang trying to put this team on his back here and here's McLaughlin now in for Zizzy Zizzy slides it ahead for Hardware Hardware lets his shot go great job by Duckett to block that one tremendous defensive play by Duckett as Jamal Hardware was in all alone great ball by Colin Zizzy as well to lead uh, Hardware in it's time to unleash your potential. Jamal Hardware now sends this one in short, flicked on, and that one goes up and out of play. Another corner coming. Yeah, great job there by Dershang showing up on that left side. Here's a replay on that one as McLaughlin is able to find Zizzy and watch this little turn and touch by Zizzy. Tremendous heads up play. And Duckett, unbelievable defense to get in there and get that foot in front of that ball. Tremendous job. Duckett just able to show how well he can read the game there. De Prima swings this one inside. That one's in the back of the net. The Islanders tie it up. Cody Andrews comes up from the defensive position and ties it up here in the 89th minute of play. And you know, we talked about that early on in the moments of the game. 
Cody Andrews being a dangerous player in the box. He's in his size, he's in his frame. He's going to look for every opportunity to get ahead on the ball. And that's just what he did there. The Prima comes over and takes that kick and gets that kick a little bit further in. Hardware with two corner kicks and was not able to put it deep inside in the middle. This was key to get it in there and let Harrisburg get a shot at it. And what a great job fighting off some defenders by Cody Andrews. Yeah. And look, Nick Noble was in there too as well. You know, if, unfortunately for Skiri, if he was only about four inches taller, should have had his high heels on, probably could have got that. <laughs> Unfortunate for him. Tremendous uh, job by Andrews to get on the end of that one. But what a crazy month. How many last second goals between the World Cup uh, even tonight have we seen this past month? Soccer's been exciting for... Uh, this country the past uh, Three or four weeks. I think it's definitely arrived when you look at the crowds that have been gathering for the games in parks and in the middle of cities and watching on giant screens It's been just so much fun to just see this game come alive this uh, World Cup, especially in the United States you know, Vital point here for uh, Harrisburg uh, tonight Let's not lose out on three points. Uh, game's not over yet, but should be able to stay disciplined defensively. Come away with a point. That ball long, and I'm not sure how much stoppage time there was. I think there was only two minutes called for. And we're getting close to the end of that. Is this ball going to go up and out of play? Yes, it is. So a throw in coming for the Islanders as Zizzy takes a knock there. Duckett getting himself forward there. Yeah, unfortunate for Charlotte. Uh, they put together a good performance tonight. Uh, probably should have been able to come away with the three points. Yeah, I think uh, I think Harrisburg stole that away from him. It was a great ball played in by DePreman, a nice head by Cody Andrews, and there it is. That's the final whistle. I think that and Charlotte will scores. hop on the bus a little Your disappointed with this uh, with this outcome, Jason. The I think the Harrisburg will be very happy that they were able to save a point and come out of this game with a point because um, the chances were not there. And um, but both teams who desperately needed three points pick up only one again. And even though they got the point. It's not the, you know, they've got to find a way to put the ball in the net and pick up the three points. Yeah, um, you know, that's been a huge gap for them this year. They've been trying to figure it out all year long. Um, you know, they're looking for that player. Maybe it might be a, a personnel problem in and around the top offensively as you're going forward. Uh, but it's something they need, to, they need to fix. They need to fix it quick. Approaching the second half of the season, and those points are vital at this point. you got to put together a string of wins. Uh that's going to put your team in playoff contention. And here's some of the highlights of tonight's contest. We saw that ball early on, and then this one swung across here. It's going to go back out of the zone here by the Islanders. This ball sent through here, trying to get on the end of it. There was Morgan Langley. So lots of action in tonight's contest. Nice ball could swung in here and a great crack by Newman, and that one goes off the crossbar. All that coming in the first half. All the scoring, though, coming in the second. Jimmy McLaughlin with an opportunity goes off the post. And then the opportunity, uh, again, this is the same. Another one from McLaughlin, actually. Takes it down along the end line, able to cut it back. And that one chipped away. Long ball sent to the back post. And that one in the back of the net. By Sakiri, that was their goal of the game. Couple other opportunities. Herrera swinging this one. Sakiri almost with the second, but offsides on the play. And then the ball that comes in, the tying goal. There it is. Is Cody Andrews and look at Nick Noble, right up there fighting and battling, helping out up front to see if they can't put that one away. So Harrisburg takes this one home by a record. Or, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, game ends at a tie, 1-1 as they're able to pick up a goal late on to pick up one point for each one of these. Don't forget, next game coming up is City Islanders at home Saturday, July 5th against Charlotte. I'm sorry, against Charleston. <laughs> game time is 6 p.m. For tickets, go to cityislanders.com. For Jason uh, Hotchkin, I'm Chad Edwards. And for our entire Invicta crew, thanks for watching USL Pro Soccer right here on Invicta Sports, presented by Faulkner Honda. See you next time.